All right, Medicaid. there you have no, several members of Democratic leadership speaking following their meeting with President Obama on the Hill. President Obama meeting with Democratic leadership to save Obamacare. We just heard from Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, and Patty Murray from Washington State with this real message. I mean, they even have a sign. Chuck Schumer's using the line, make America sick again, almost seeming like they're saying, ready? You're ready, Republicans? I dare you. I double dog dare you. What are you going to deliver? I want to break this down and bring in Democratic strategist and former deputy campaign manager for Martin O'Malley, Liz Smith, and Republican strategist Brad Todd. Brad, I want to start with you. Donald Trump is very good at sending tweets. He has sent out a slew of tweets attacking Obamacare this morning. But to Patty Murray from Washington's point, three days after elected, Donald Trump looked at the American people and he said, I am going to deliver better health care at a lower price. How's he going to do that? Well, first off, watching this press conference, you know, it, it makes me think that they dug these people out of a time capsule. It's like they didn't see the last three elections. We've had three straight elections for Congress for the Affordable Care Act has been a very big issue, and the American people have resoundingly said, get rid of it. It's, the law's never been popular since the day it was passed. Democrats don't even run on it in campaigns. You never see television commercials in Democratic campaigns touting the law or saying Brad, save the law. So, so that's, why that's not a surprise, without a doubt. Listen, we knew they would come out there. Oh, actually, Bernie Sanders is speaking. I want to listen to that real quick. Sure. On May 7th, 2015, Donald Trump tweeted, quote, I was the first and only potential GOP candidate to state there will be no cuts to Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Now, the point is, Trump didn't just say this in passing. He didn't say it in the middle of the night. He didn't say it in a particular interview. This was a cornerstone of his campaign. He said it over and over and over again. Donald Trump said he will not cut Social Security. He will not cut Medicare. He will not cut Medicaid. Therefore, one of two things are true. Either Donald Trump simply lied to the elderly and the working people of this country and just made campaign promises that he had no intention of ever keeping. That is one reality. Or there is another reality, and that is right now, before Congress wastes an enormous amount of time, Donald Trump has got to come forward, maybe through a tweet, one of his tweets, and say clearly that Donald Trump will veto any legislation that cuts Medicare, that cuts Medicaid, or that cuts Social Security. And if he makes that clear to his Republican colleagues, we can save us all a whole lot of time and start getting to work doing what this country desperately needs to have done. Good job, Bernie. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Oh. Okay. Go ahead, Frank. Why don't you be available for questions? Uh, I want to now uh, resume uh, our program and take you back to our panel. Brad, before we took uh, that sound from Bernie Sanders, you were saying those, those Democrats, they're in a time warp. We've heard this over and over. I get that. Right. So turn the page with me. Here we are, Donald Trump's campaign promise. We're going to repeal, we're going to replace. What is he going to replace with? Because earlier today, when I spoke to Trump Transition Executive Committee member Anthony Scaramucci, he took me on a great space coaster to immunotherapy and into fracking. But let's talk Obamacare. Let's assume it's out. What will it be replaced with? Well, I think you have to start with a couple of premises. First off, you know, o o President Obama threw a life jacket at someone in a snowstorm. He gave the wrong solution to the problem. Sir, it wasn't the sir, same just problem. Just one second. I don't want to talk about President Obama or well, Democrats. No, hang on I'd a like second. You to hang, help me. hang on. We got You got to diagnose our problem. With? You got to diagnose our problem. He gave us a coverage answer when we had a cost problem. So I think the 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 next step for Republicans and Democrats, if they're willing to be reasonable and help, is to address cost. Obamacare has driven up costs. Our first principle has to say the hundred. 55 million Americans who are in employee sponsored coverage, we need to get their costs down. How? Uh, Brad, that's the, that's I'd like the, fir that's I'd the first like chance. To first please objective. articulate for me how. What well, is the plan to do that? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to get the government mandates out. You have to have the government quit taking such a heavy hand. You know, we have 8 million Americans who've been paying a penalty for failing to buy a product they didn't want to buy. 
that we need to fix things for those 8 million people. They, they shouldn't be penalized for not buying health insurance. That's the first answer. Second, we need to take all the government's heavy hand of deciding what has to be in every single plan in every single state. That's been driving premiums up. It's been driving deductibles up. And the 155 million Americans in employee-sponsored care are tired of paying for this. Okay, well, I just want to address some of the points in there. If you look at um, at the cost, and you're talking about costs going up, uh, the average uh, cost for a family um, has gone up significantly less than had we not implemented Obamacare. So it has slowed the growth of health care costs and made it more affordable. And if you want to talk about the people who are uh, enrolled in Obamacare, let's look at the most respected pollsters when it comes to health care. Kaiser Foundation, Commonwealth, they say that 80, over 80 80 percent of Obama cons Obamacare consumers approve of the care that they have. And these are some hard facts for Republicans. You know, it is very easy to burn down a house. It's a lot harder to rebuild it out of the ashes. And today, 20, more, 20 million more people have health insurance because of Obamacare. The uninsured rate is at the lowest in history. It's uh, been cut in half. And you have uh, Trump administration officials saying that, you know, if you have health care today, you will still have it under President Trump. And there is no plan out there right now that would ensure that. And in fact, if the Republicans go ahead with repealing Obamacare without any sort of replacement plan, and if they go along just with repeal and delay, it will throw marketplaces into chaos. They're will, already in it chaos. Will, in, it will you, encourage you insurers the 23 to drop. co-ops have failed. It's already in chaos. How has it when, failed when it's covered 20 million people? How has it, it failed? It's failed because costs are going up. In Tennessee, premiums are going up 63%. 18 out of the 23 co-ops that this plan set up as the model for what single payer would look like have failed. There are only five left. So, Democrats have had six years to say, you know what, we accept it. We wanted to do this, we wanted it to work, but it's not working. Yep. They had six years to try to fix it. And now, they need to listen to the voters and help Republicans unwind what is a failure. And you know what? Democrats have had six years to fix it. And in those six years, when we have offered solutions to fix it, you know who hasn't gone along with the Democrats? The Republicans. You know who hasn't offered any sort of comprehensive, any sort of coherent plan to replace it? The Republicans. You guys have been casted a protest vote after protest vote, and a protest vote is fine when you know that a president won't sign it. It's a little bit different when you know that 20 million people, including as many as 13 million children, could be kicked off the health care rolls, and there's 20 million people who are one sickness away from bankruptcy. You can't unwind it if you don't unwind the mandates and the Cadillac tax and the Medicaid expansion. Democrats have been unwilling to offend their core constituencies to defend the president's legacy. This is stubbornness on the part of the president. He's had six years to fix it on his terms, and he wouldn't do it. Well, this is, you know, it's funny that you say the core constituencies because, you know, some of the people who like Obamacare the most, it's Trump voters. You know the states that have benefited the most from Obamacare? Kentucky and West Virginia. I, I believe that President Obama lost West Virginia by 42 points. Republicans and West Virginia have all has but benefited one the House most. seat in Kentucky. And they've, they've all, every Republican in, in the Kentucky delegation, all but one a Republican, they all run on repealing Obamacare. The voters of Kentucky have spoken very clearly. They don't want the law. Th have they made use of it? Have they made use of it? Absolutely no. This fight ain't over. Liz, Brad, thank you so much. Thank Clearly, you. this conversation is continuing. Hopefully, there's going to be um, some constructive conversations <laughs> in the future. I appreciate you both sharing your thoughts and Thanks. your passion. Thanks. All right, we're clearly going to stay on this. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.